When my son was about eight months old, I took him home to grandma and grandpa's for vacation. Now, there's one thing that I know, that grandparents are very different from when they were parents, right? <laughs> Something happens to them. So I took my son, Taylor, home to see grandma and grandpa, and my dad thought that he would be helpful and help me put Taylor to bed. He wasn't much help. I think he thought part of his role was to play the tickle games and wind him up as much as he could. Taylor was absolutely loving it, though. He couldn't take his eyes off of his grandpa. And my dad was thoroughly enjoying the role of grandpa. As they were playing on the bed, I looked at my dad, and he looked up at me, and he had tears in his eyes. I was afraid. I had never seen him get teary before. When I asked him what was wrong, he looked at me and he said, I don't ever remember you being this age. I don't ever remember playing with you like this. Now, frankly, I don't remember much about my dad as I was growing up either. He was a dairy farmer, and the life of a dairy farmer meant that he was always working. Now, he may not be a great dad, but he is an amazing grandpa. When my sons come to visit, he drops absolutely everything to be with them, to talk to them, to play with them, to go fishing with them, to take them on four-wheeler rides to the bush. That day, seeing my dad and my son play together made me realize something. I didn't want to get so caught up in the busyness of life that later I had regrets. I didn't want to get to a point where I said to myself, I'm sorry I missed that. Are the choices that you're making right now the right ones for you? Are you risking missing those memorable moments? What is it that you value? What brings you satisfaction? What brings you happiness? What keeps you healthy? We need to make these things a priority in our life. But you have to believe that you're worthwhile enough, that your life is worthwhile enough. Now, one of the biggest questions I get is, how do you do that? How do I live the life that I want? For some of us, it's about letting go. It may be letting go of the superhuman syndrome. Hmm. Do any of these resonate with you? Do you believe you can, should, and must do it all? Or are you able to ask for help? Do you neglect your own needs because other people's are more important? Or are you able to carve out some time for yourself? Or do you believe that if you don't, who will? Or are you able to let it go and let the pieces fall where they may? Sometimes happiness is about letting go. What do you need to let go of? The need to be in control? The need to do it all? The need for approval? Leading a fulfilling life is all about choices. It's all about understanding what choices I have. And I've been studying stress and mental health for years, and I know we have an abundance of choices when it comes to leading our life and dealing with those stressful situations. But I know that those choices can be confusing and overwhelming. That's where the SOS principle comes in. The SOS principle is a series of categories that give us some strategies that help us to be able to live our life, to be able to deal with those stressful situations. They give us the tools in our tool belt so that we can live our life and be healthier and deal better. So let's start. The first S, SOS. The first S starts for, stands for situation. What are you going to do about the things that are causing you stress? Can you problem solve them? Can you break them down? Can you get rid of them? Hmm, can you let them go? Can you delegate them off to somebody else? Can you negotiate around them? Can you gather up more information so it's easier to solve? Situation. The O. The O stands for ourself. <coughs> what are you doing to take care of yourself? There's a saying that I like that says, how thin can I spread myself before I no longer exist? Hmm. How thin can I spread myself before I no longer exist? It's, for many of us, we're in that caregiving role, and it's easier to take care of other people, but we often neglect our own needs, don't we? But if we want to be able to take care of the people around us, we have to be able to take care of ourselves. So the O stands for how do we take care of ourselves? How do we give ourselves a break? How do we minimize the impact that that stress is having on us? So are you eating right? Are you sleeping right? Are you exercising? What are you doing for relaxation? 
When was the last time that you had so much fun or you got caught up in a hobby that time just slipped away? If you feel it in your neck and shoulders, what are you doing to get rid of it? If you feel it in your stomach, what are you doing to minimize it? Situation, ourself, and then the last death stands for support. Who are you talking to? Who are you venting to? Who are you asking for help from? Who are you socializing with? Who are you playing with? What do you believe in? Who are you connected to? Do you have enough supports in your support circle so that you don't feel isolated and alone with no one to turn to? We need to rely better on our supports. We need to learn how to communicate with our supports. We need to stop assuming that they know what we're thinking, what we're feeling, when we need help. We need to be assertive with our supports, but not get so defensive that sometimes we attack our supporters. We need to be able to say what we mean, mean what we say, but not be mean when we say it. Another quote that I like. 